Daniel's Prayer Healing School. Daniel's Healing School number three. Can you see that? Daniel's Healing School number three. Healing School number three. Daniel's Healing School number three. Now here we go. We want to talk about uh, this video 94C. Our last video was 94B. This is 94C Healing School 2-5C. And it's uh, God's Word Will Fix or Destroy. And that's your choice. Okay? God's Word Will Either Fix or Destroy. And that's your choice. Alright, so before we go into this, let's pray. Father God, we got a lot to cover today to finish this um, 2 5 healing school uh, uh, RFT um, study guide. And in Jesus' name, help us to uh, deliver your word correctly and bring understanding to these people. I'm going to hear it in Jesus' name, amen. Let them understand, Lord. Amen. So, uh, I'm at timestamp 36. That's why I moved part C. Uh, two, I moved it up because um, I didn't get it all into the last video. Okay? And basically, God's Word repairs. He fixes things. He, uh, the Lord searches out things. Okay? And when He finds them, His job is to heal and deliver. Okay? And that means to uh, He immediately sets about to repair. So when God finds you and He's going to assess your condition, He's going to... Uh, fix you physically emotionally financially or whatever and God and God's word is on autopilot it's set there by an autopilot by all the ordinances that God has set forth okay by his ordinances All right, basically, and, and uh, by his ordinances, okay? So that's basically what this is about, and God's impartial. He doesn't play favorites. If you're out of adjustment, he's going to repair you, okay? And the word uh, is, I told you, eternity past and the now, the word, right? The word is always in the now. That's why the word is immediate, immediately, okay? When does God start to work on you? Okay, when he finds you, immediately. Remember that uh, the centurion and he had a sick daughter that was uh, uh, dying? And uh, uh, okay, the word, I put the word, the now, immediately, the business of bringing you back into proper adjustment. And, and, the, and the centurion looked at his watch, uh, and I don't know what he had, a sundial or, or what. And he looked at it, and he knew it was the same hour Jesus said that your daughter would be made whole, go your way. Right? Because Jesus was the Word, and uh, the Word does everything in the now. Because that's where we live. We live now. We don't live in the past, or we don't live in the future. We live in the now. And eternity is the now. And that's where the two things intersect, the now. That's why the word immediately brings everything back into proper adjustment. Okay? All right. I'll make that now green. Okay? All right. Maybe put the letters black. Okay? There you go. So, uh, now the thing is, sometimes we've been uh, not allowing God to do the proper adjustments in our lives. We've been offering a resistance, like I was speaking in the last beginning of last video about that young pastor that uh, is worried about profit, the heir of Baal, because he went about to profit instead of salvation. So the problem here is we've been offering a resistance. And what did I say God is going to do? God is either going to fix the problem or he's going to destroy what's causing the problem. Okay? The, uh, you, the problem is either going to be fixed or the problem is going to be destroyed. 
and it's really the object that that's you or whoever that's the object uh, that's the choice of the object whether he's going to allow God to fix him or he's going to resist and God will have to destroy him okay and, and it's not for us to do it's God that does that okay God's word all right see the potential of your future or lack of future see uh, those things that offer resistance all right now if you offer resistance to God's word then you know your future is not going to be as bright as it could be, right? And we don't live in the future, but certainly we can plan for the future, right? But we live in the now, right? We understand that there is a past. We understand that there's going to be things that you can plan for, but we only can live in the now, okay? we If we're trained, we can put down tracks, but when we get there, we have a support, but we can't uh, <clears throat> we can't make the train be in more than one place. Okay, all right. So basically, you can understand that or not. I'm not sure. I hope so. The word is the ongoing, active, and the operated function. Okay. The word. Okay, I'll put the word is. And I'll put there the word, the word, and I'll make that big, the word. All right, I'll make that 28. All right, the word is ongoing active operative function of the word okay all right all right and um, what does it do it either uh, it's gonna fix or destroy all right and I'll put that in there either fix or destroy okay and you guys see a lot of bad people in the world right now right we don't judge them or anything but God is going to uh, eventually it's going to come to a climax and they're going to be either fix, fixed or destroyed okay because you know there's a judgment for everything right at the end after this grace is over then the judgment comes right now God did uh, God didn't change the Old Testament to the New Testament God did not change uh, from the Old Testament to the T New Testament God did not change I will put his person or character All right. All right. God, God did not change his person or his character from the Old to the New Testament. Now, so that's been uh, some people have been lying about that. They're saying God is one thing in the Old Testament and another thing in the New Testament, and that's not right. Okay. All right, God is, you're going to realize that God is at rest in all situations, okay? Okay, begin to realize God is at rest. Make that blue. All right. In all situations and scenarios, okay? You can't, if you can't see God, I said, you, you, you can't see God at rest with regard to healing, but think, that God is still active with regard to punishment, okay? Because either God's at rest or he's not, okay? God is God has uh, created everything from in eternity. He set all his ordinances and laws in place. 
He's, he's made everything he's done into a blessing. So everything works together to be prosperous and multiplying and as, as designed and even to the place where it will be self-fixing and on autopilot. Okay? All right, now here, get this, okay? This is Psalms 138.2. And this is King David saying this, right? For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. All right? Psalm 138, verse 2. And I think I'm going to uh, put this for... Uh, I'm going to make this my title for this message. Let's see if we go to uh, find C, C plus. That's how I find out where I want to go. See, I, I find the, put the find sign out there, the find in the document. And then I put C space, a couple pluses. And then I get it, right? Okay. For the, And I put there, right there. For thou hast magnified that word above all thy name. Wow. Now we see magnified. Word, I put word above. I gotta find my place where I was, okay? Let me see. There you go, I found it, okay. See, with the navigation there, it's over there right on top. I dictate right there where it says find. That's the one I'm using. Okay, for thou hast magnified that word above all thy name, right? Okay, so man finds himself in conflict with the word because man is offering resistance. A right, conflict, I'll put slash, resist, Resistance, okay? So if you're offering resistance, if you're not letting the Lord, see the Lord's giving you a choice. The Lord says, I'll fix you or I'll destroy you. I'll give you the blessing or if you don't want that, you get the curse, right? So there's no middle ground with uh, the Lord. And that's why the John, the apostle, speaks in everything, if you read his letters, in either black or white, all right? Because, you know why? Because God will automatically uh, repair you, fix you, you know, make you a blessing, you know, take you out of the curse. You know, like the ugly duckling that's covered with oil, and like in the Gulf of Mexico, the Lord will take that duck and wash them all up and set them free to live a blessed life. But if the duck flees away from him and he can't catch the duck, then the duck's gonna die. But it was the duck's choice, okay? The word, it's because it's the word that is the reality and stability of the law. The word is the reality and stability of the law. And you know what? I'm gonna put here God's word. God spoken word. All right. Now, uh, a lot of people ain't got the Holy Ghost. A lot, they're just natural minded people. Then they might not. Uh, they're not going to understand that. Okay, because it's the word, God spoken word, that is the reality and the stability of the law. See, God destroyed Sodom. They offered resistance, right? Even those people that are turned into the pillars, pillars of salt. Why did God turn those people that looked back at Sodom when it was destroyed into salt? Because he knew, uh, he gave them a choice. Uh, he gave them a choice, his word, or what they had been living in, okay? That was the choice. It's the same like the tree of life or the tree of good and evil. So if you turned your head to the tree of good and evil or Sodom, 
Then what would happen is where your head go, is pointed, your body follows. So God knew as long as their head was pointed to the direction that God told them to go and they were obeying God, then they were okay. But if they turned back, the ones that turned back, he knew the whole body would be turned back. It's just like the bridle. Who, own, who owns the bridle in your mouth? Because you're either owned by God or you're owned by the devil. Now, where is the one you're taking direction from? What is your heart making your head do? To go forward to God's new place where he wants you to be? Or to uh, be sorry you left it and look back? So that's why he turned those into pillars of salt to remind everybody about his power, that he's the Lord of all. And those people weren't going to follow him anyway. They were just going to be a problem like the other people were in the desert before. Wanting to, go, wanting to go back to Egypt, the land of sin. And <coughs> we see God destroyed the earth. <coughs> <coughs> we see God destroyed the earth. Because these uh, Nephilim, these, the man, <coughs> it says in Genesis 6, <coughs> that angels came down from heaven and mated with man, with his women, right? The uh, sons of God took the daughters of men. So that's alien hybrids, right? And then these hybrids, <clears throat> they started controlling the governments. And they started to make cities and raise up statues to their to their to the gods. And even pyramids that the pyramids point to a particular arm of our galaxy called Orion. And we're in the Pegasus arm. I see the galaxy is like this, the galaxy is like this, but it's got two arms. This is the Orion arm. <clears throat> and this is the Pegasus arm. And you notice on all Microsoft games, some of the Microsoft games I know is on the back of them, the back label, it says Orion. That kind of means that like alien technology to me. It's some kind of mass coding. <clears throat> but, like David slew the giant and he had six, six toes. Right? He had more toes than he was supposed to got. And he's definitely bigger than everybody else. And he was a, like an uh, alien hybrid. And they had whole races of alien hybrid. And this alien hybrid found all over the earth. Even in the United States. They say the United States, America, uh, the Americas, North and South Americas, the continents. Uh, see, there was a god over there, a snake god that they worshipped. It was called a mer a meryl, right? And that kind of sounds like America today, right? And like in Ohio, they have these mounds of burial chambers of these aliens, right? And they make golf courses out of them today. But you know what? They have all these holographics you can see from space, like that, uh, and, and they even make them like um, that 66, Route 66, that goes north and south like a snake all the way up to uh, Area 51 so the aliens from space can see the snake thing and they can find Area 51. But see, I'm, I, let's get back on track. The Word, because it's the Word, God's spoken Word uh, into man's heart. Okay. That is reality and the stability of law. Okay? Now let's look here. See? God destroyed Sodom. Or we see God destroyed the earth, right? Like something that man was in conflict with the word. See, man was not in conflict with God. Because God uh, is resting. God has sent his word to handle everything. To fix and repair or destroy. Okay? He created everything beautiful and perfect. And the word is like the guarantee or the, 
the blessed assurance or, you know, the repair, right? So he can rest easy because he knows uh, everything is going to be beautiful and maintained. So if you get in conflict with God's laws or you fix, put a fork in the toaster or you jump off a skyscraper, you'll get hurt. But it was your choice. You decided to do that. Okay? You didn't operate the laws of God correctly. When you get crossways with uh, God's word, things don't go good for you. So if you want a good future, you got to get and uh, you got go with God's purpose. Go with what God has for you. Now I understand. One, we need to be real. We need to understand two the reality and three the stability of all things. Four so that we can understand that we're in conflict with the word. Five, that was intended to do us good, but we have gotten crossways with it in such a way that it is not able to perform its work within the uh, purpose, uh, prosperous effect that God has said his word was sent to affect everything, okay? And I'm going to make that the bold, okay? All right, make that bold and put that in blue. All right. And put, we're in conflict with the word. Make that bold too. All right. So, uh, you definitely don't want to be in conflict with God's word. You had Adam and Cain. Remember Adam and Cain? And what happened with Adam and Cain? Uh... Okay, he, uh, uh, remember, you know, God came to both Adam and Cain, Cain immediately after their transgression. God came to Adam and said, Adam, why are you naked? And then he came to Cain and says, your brother's blood calls, uh, me, calls to me from the ground. What's the deal? So, uh, God went, uh, as far as, with Cain, God went as far as to protect the first murderer, okay, to make provision for his safety. You know, Adam killed the whole human race, basically. But, you know, God went to both of them, so God went as far as to protect murderers, to make, uh, to make provision for their safety. Okay? Because then he clothed Adam too, and Eve, and put them, uh, he put them out of the garden. But, uh, but he still uh, fed them and took care of them. So man is neither in conflict with God. But they have sweat a little bit, see? Man is never in conflict with God, okay? Man is never in conflict with God. But man has found himself or placed himself willingly or, you know, unwillingly in with the word in conflict. All right, and I better put that uh, there. Okay, in conflict with the word. Make that bold, it is bold, okay. All right, see if uh, the word, the word is impartial, right? And if you use it wrong, you're gonna hurt yourself. Okay, like my uncle, you know what he was? He was a carpenter. And, you know, his finger was sawed off. His index finger? Maybe one or two of them, right? I remember that. So whenever I use a power tool like a saw, I always remember that before I even plug it in, right? So that you got to be handle God's word correctly, okay? Because, you know, you could, you could hurt yourself. God's word is more powerful than a, a power saw. So, you know, if I tell my kid, okay, hey, uh, John, don't put uh, your finger in the outlet, the electricity outlet, because it'll hurt you. It's bad. Don't put your finger in the outlet, in the electricity outlet. So then if I turn my back and he puts his finger, uh, takes his finger out of his mouth and put it in the electricity outlet, it's, uh, it's that kid that put his finger in the outlet 
It's not me that did it. Okay, although I should have maybe bought safety protective outlets to cover those uh, things up, knowing that he was a child. Now, whenever the word enters somebody or is in conflict with the good, remember uh, the standard, the word looks at the standard very good. What is God's very good? And then he corrects uh, whatever it is to that standard of very good, okay? And if uh, anyone's in conflict with that, he's going to immediately correct the course, okay? He's going to attempt to, to, to correct the course. I will put uh, attempt, make that blue, okay? Oh, uh, maybe I'll make it gray, okay, gray. All right. He's going to attempt uh, to uh, fix it, okay? So you don't have to go into any anxiety or fear or you don't have to worry about anything because God's going to handle it. Just like it says here, okay? Good morning. This is God. I will be handling all your problems today. I will not need your help. So have a great day. All right? Because fear and religion are two greatest resistance creators, okay? Fear and religion are the two great resistance creators. All right. But the word uh, immediately, and this is a revelation of God's grace. Okay, we know that God is a great I am, and we know that he heals immediately. Okay? So when you ask God for healing, you, you're going to be healed immediately. Okay, if, if, if you got the word in your heart, okay, listen, if you got the spoken word in your heart, if you got God's word in your heart, then God's word is going to heal you immediately. Now, do you have God's word in your heart? Do you have the, okay? And you don't even have to be reborn. You don't even have to have the Holy Spirit. You only have to have the Word of God. The spoken Word of God. Okay? The Word of God is impartial. And the Word of God doesn't care if you go to a Lutheran church, Charismatic church, the Hindu church, the Hindu temple, the Buddhist temple, or anything else. Or if you're a prostitute, a drug runner, or you committed murder. Okay? The problem is all those things in life most likely were uh, offer resistance to the word. Those things offer resistance to the Lord. So uh, so what we are do is uh, we could take ourselves our resistance to the word and the word would just fix it, fix it. okay? Alright, the word wants to prosperous, prosperously affect the outcome. That's the job of the word. Blessed, that's what blessed is. The word just doesn't, the word just doesn't destroy. The word first tries to fix it. You know, maybe I better make this bigger. Alright. The word just doesn't destroy. The word, the word is first. The word first tries to fix it. All right. Now, let me just, uh, okay, the word. I'm going to make the word capital W. Maybe needs a comma after the destroy. Okay, put a little comma there. Okay, quotes. Capital T. Okay, the word just doesn't destroy. The word first tries to fix it. All right, let me just go like that. All right. There you go. All right. I'll put uh, 
uh, fix it in red. Yeah. All right. So basically, uh, let me see what we got here. So basically, the word tries to fix things first. Okay. All right. So, uh, so basically, whatever gets in the way of the of the word, you know, gets uh, knocked off. Okay. It even try if if you're in conflict with the word, the word tries to uh, fix it. If it can't fix it, then he destroys it. Just like in the promised land. Before, when they went against all those nations in the promised land, they offered them a chance to get it right with the Lord. If they didn't get it right with the Lord, then the Lord whacked them off. All right. All right, so what we want to do is we want to be in line with the Word of God, and this is part of our rest. You can't be in a rest with God unless you're in line with the Word of God, okay? Revelation knowledge, that's the power encounter with your understanding, okay? The sudden presence, you know, of the truth. The sudden presence of truth, okay? All right, and uh, anytime, you can mark my words, anytime there's going to be a prosperous effect of the outcome, there's always going to be a power encounter of some sort at some level of our existence, okay? And that's like the sudden presentation, you know, of truth, revelation knowledge. Just all of a sudden, you find yourself thinking differently about something to be repaired in your mind. Okay? Since I started the series, there's a whole bunch of stuff that got repaired. Okay? 2 Thessalonians 2-10 and the King James Version and, all, and with all deceitfulness and unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Okay? Okay. In, in them that perish, I highlight that, because they receive not the love of the, of the truth. Okay? And I make because in bold. That's what that scripture is about. And the Message Bible says, Evil sleight of hand that plays to the gallery of those who hate the truth that could save them. How about NLT? He will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on the way to destruction because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. See that? Okay. Now you will probably look up 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 10 and read the whole chapter. So you want to make sure you see what they're talking about in, in the entirety. But it says there, because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. Okay. On their way to destruction. Okay. All right. And then the King James says, says that something's in them, okay? Uh, that deceitfulness and unrighteousness in them that perish. In them, I make uh, deceitfulness and unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they may be saved and of course that word is probably zozo all right All right, let's see. 
Let's go back down here. All right. Uh, see, the destruction, the resistance, the deception. Deception is the resistance, okay? Uh, you know, you know, dirty thoughts, dirty soul, that's resistance. You know, you got to let God clean you up, okay? They didn't love the truth. If they loved the truth, they could be saved. And what is love? Love is not all emotional. Love is commitment, okay? When Jesus died on the cross, that's love. Okay, he gave everything for what, his, what he was committed to. He was committed to us above his own life, okay? He was committed to death to love the truth, okay? And the truth is, he was pouring out the love of God inside of him. From Romans chapter 5, verse 5, he was loving us with his Father's love. The love he got from God, his own Father, inside his heart, he was giving to us. And he gave all of it to us, even to the point of his own death. Now, what is the love of the truth? Okay? The love of the truth. The revelation of God's love for you. They perish because they did not receive the revelation. And what's the revelation is God's word that's spoken to your heart. Okay? Revelation. Is a burning bush in your heart. Okay, I'm going to leave it just like that. To me, that's what revelation means. And I put me thinking there too. Because we don't want anyone to get the panties in the twat. All right. Me thinking... Revelation is a burning bush in your heart. Okay, we drop that down the line. There you go. And then I got a picture of myself right there. That's me. It says gloriousmercy.com. If you go there, you could uh, go down, scroll down 30 times, three zero, three, 30 times page down to the meet Jesus and get the Holy Ghost in filling. Okay, and when you, I got reborn, I did this. Exodus chapter 12, verse 6 through 7. I put the blood of Jesus over my heart. And you know, that's just like going through the Red Sea. Okay, that's a shadow on type of that. You put the, uh, if you ask God to forgive all your sins, and um, just tell me you're sorry. You don't know what they all are, because you couldn't say them all anyway. And then put the blood of Jesus over your heart. And ask and, and believe that God died for you on the cross, that uh, He took your punishment, and uh, they He died and was put in a tomb, and on the third day He rose again from the heaven. Okay, and then He rose again to the heaven and put His blood on the mercy seat, and He seated with God on, on the right hand of Majesty, right? And ask God the Father. Uh, you start with Father God and say all that and ask the Father God to come into your heart. And then you say, uh, uh, you know, forgive me again and uh, and, and uh, come into my heart of the center of all I am in Jesus' name. Amen. And then you bow your head and be as honest and sincere as possible knowing that God the Father is going to come in. And you wait for him, bow your head, and wait for him being as honest and sincere as possible because you're going to meet Jesus. And that's, I, I typed all that what I just said on that website, gloriousmercy.com, okay? I typed it down so I could get it just right for you, okay? So I wouldn't leave nothing out. And then you're going to raise your hand to heaven and you're going to praise and ask the Holy Ghost to come inside of you. Okay, well, he's going to live and reign with you, and you can get your own bunny bush. Okay, now, born-again Christians, they don't understand God's love for them. They haven't received the love of the truth. Father God, I received the love of the truth. Let's pray. Whenever you see something in the Bible, you pray. Father God, send me the revelation of the love of the truth. 
send me the love of the truth in my heart so we can love the truth make sure we love the truth so we will save us so we won't die and perish and when you love the truth that means you want to obey the truth because you know the, the, the truth the word of God is a two-edged sword and if you, you the sword could either protect you or cut you alright so we want to love the truth so we can handle the truth correctly so we won't be hurt by the truth but we will set people free with the truth Amen. Give us the love of the truth, Lord, in Jesus' name, and remove our resistance to you, okay? Because we don't want to be part of this destruction. We want you to make our way prosperous. And that's the way, that's what we're going to choose today. We're going to choose life. See, in the conclusion here, see, God introduced the blessing, okay? Like it says in Genesis, the blessing. That you be fruitful and multiply, right? And you replenish the earth. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. And God even created us in his own image. I mean, that's setting us up for, for prosperity, right? And God blessed them, right? And he said, God blessed them and said, All that he created was very good. So the word he spoke determined the course of the ages from the perception of blessing and good everything was introduced favorably in other words right and the word was is always going to maintain that course overcoming every every resistance with either a positive or negative effect okay all right just like you know uh don't, you know get me started okay get me started okay we're maintaining a velocity for overcoming overcoming resistance, right? All we have to do is uh, let the Father handle our problems. Like it says, uh, good morning, this is God. You can actually buy the sign on eBay, right? It comes in different, uh, different, different uh, formats, like different colors and stuff. Okay? Good morning, this is God. I'll be handling all your problems today. I will not need your help, so have a great day. And I have that in a frame, and I have a couple of pictures of Jesus throwing out seed, right? And I have a picture of a whale on the sea there, and, uh, and some other beautiful things, okay? So uh, there's a link about force and philosophy, velocity, right? I don't know if you need that or not. And uh, let's see where we're at. I have uh, the conclusion. So I made a study guide, and you could uh, change around. Uh, you can fix it better if you want to. And then I have some redirects here. I have secondchancecassette.com, Froggy Club, Daniel's Fire 325.com, Dan Handlin.com, Deliverance, Daniel Handlin.com, Daniel Handlin.com. Okay, I have a lot of things there, right? And then I have some uh, secured uh, websites. Okay, the ones I just mentioned, you don't put no S in the HTTP because these are redirects. The other ones, I have secured websites. And uh, you can just, there are S's in there. You can go there. And then I have a section for for other prophets. Okay. And I have that in yellow. I have some good ones. Uh, Deep End, Gatekeeper's Realm, Spiritual, Spiritual Warfare, Visions and Dreams. Okay, I like that one. And Special Word of Wisdom about Bitter Waters. That's really great. Then I have Forgiveness, How to Start a Fire. Vertical and horizontal, horizontal in your heart, okay, and uh, beyond the four walls, okay, and I have some, okay, Corey Ten Boom. You remember that picture I had about uh, Romans five five about God's love in your heart? Well, I learned that from Corey Ten Boom, and what she was the only one that escaped out of the women's death camps from the Nazis, right? There are sixty thousand women that were put to death. She was the only one that escaped. And now we can find out how she did it. That's her life story by the Billy, Grant, Billy or Franklin Graham Foundation. And also there's other ones in there about uh, God's love. She explains her concept of God's love and what got her through. Right? And I have some extra scriptures here. 
about uh, my word. Okay? And I know in Isaiah 66 is a summary for the Bible. Okay? Uh, Isaiah 66 is a summary for the Bible on the 66th book, which is the book of Revelation. The last chapter of Isaiah. Okay? And I have some scriptures there. You can listen to them. And then I have uh, a next lesson for the 325 devotional commentary. It's an, it's an, you can add that to your e-sword under devotionals. So you get one every day like I get them here. And when I was a kid, uh, let's see what time it is. Okay. When I was a kid, I... Uh, I, I put this here because when I was a kid, I had an experience when I was three years old in the United States around the Great Lakes area. My mom was holding my hand outside out of our, on, the, on our sidewalk outside our home when all of a sudden clouds of black locusts started rising from the ground. All in a few seconds. You see? You see one, then two, or three, then fifty, then thousands, then tens of thousands. The whole sky turned black because of these locusts. These last days of sudden and snatching away or rapture, destruction or whatever, this is the age of suddenly things happening. God has already spoken. Sudden. And I broke down what sudden means. And it means like this. Uh, a sudden bright flash. Something done quickly or unexpectedly, unexpectedly, or without warning. Unexpected, unforeseen, unanticipated, unlooked for, immediately, immediate, instantaneously, uh, abrupt, rapid, swift, lightning, quick, hurried, sharp, without warning, without notice, not bargained for, without delay. Okay? All right, and here is for June 26th, the day of the locust, from Joel chapter 1 through 3. Okay, what the swarm has left, the great locusts have eaten. What the locust swarm has left, the great locusts have eaten. What the great locusts have left, the young locusts have eaten. What the young locusts have eaten left other locusts have eaten well it sounds like they got like lots of locusts there all kinds of different kinds of locusts and eights and everything and that's joel uh chapter one verse four see and natural disasters in israel and judah were typically viewed in the old testament as god's judgments Joel raised an important question for us to answer. What should our response be to personal disasters? Okay? So I'm not going to read this whole thing, but I have it all here. On uh, this one page. And every day they put out a page like this. And you can get that again. I'm going to tell you where you get it. You get your e-sword at www.e-sword.net Okay? e-sword.net Okay. All right. And under devotionals. Okay. And I, I, I don't know if this is free or you have to pay. Maybe you had to pay $10 for it. But once you pay $10, then it's yours. Okay. I don't know what, I don't remember what it would cost me. And it's the, the 365 devotional commentary under devotionals. Okay, I know it says commentary, but it's really listed on dev devotionals. I'll put extra daily lesson. All right, save that. May I put a little space there too? All right. And let's see, we'll go back down here and see what else we got.
Then it says devotional. At the bottom of it, it says Joel chapter 2, verse 1 through 32. The years the locusts have eaten. You know, I think that's interesting because I think a lot of us feel that we, have, we didn't accomplish as much as we could have. But it talks about the day, the years the locusts have eaten. And I think that's important. Okay? Now, personal application, hold on to God's promise to repay. No matter how long you suffer, your suffering lasts. Hold on to God's promise to repay, no matter how long your suffering lasts. Okay, now let's see what we got here. It says, quotable. It says, Francis of Assisi. Quotable. My good shepherd, who has shown your very gentle mercy to us, Unworthy sinners and various physical pains and sufferings, give grace and strength to me, your little lamb, that in no tribulation or anguish or pain may I turn away from you. And that's a Francis of Assisi. And that was like a monk, a Franciscan monk. In fact, my uncle was a Franciscan monk. Did I tell you that? He died in the air. They wanted to send him back to uh, the mother home. Because he was like in this uh, Wisconsin uh, uh, monastery, and they wanted to send him home. And he didn't want to go home because, you know, he spent a lot of years and years taking care of the boiler there or whatever, and that was his home. But they forced him on a plane to send him home because I guess they had doctors over there. But Uncle Martin, you know, I told him a lot of times about Jesus and Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus and how to get the Holy Ghost and everything. And my mama told me, he said, the priest didn't like me saying that material over there. But this was a sign to me that because uh, Uncle Martin, they forced him in, the, in that plane to send him back to the mother monastery. Uh, uh, and what happened is uh, when, uh, when he was in flight, Uncle Martin died in the air. He died in the clouds. And that was a great revelation to me that uh, that he got saved. And then I remember he used to come over and visit us, and he used to uh, grow our feet. You know, you know how they grow the feet in the churches. Well, he did that when I was 13, and that was uh, 54 years ago. Because I'm like 67, and I'm in my late 60s now. So that was over 50 years ago. Right. So I remember Uncle Martin. Uncle Martin died in the air. That was like a mini rapture for him. Uh, they call him Brother Martin. All right. So praise the Lord. And let's see what else we got in here. We just remember, okay? You have to know this. Okay? The important thing here. From this whole lesson I got A, B, and C that God God's word is not the written Bible God's word is a burning burst inside of you okay God's word remember when Jesus went up into the mountain and he was transfigured okay when he spent time in prayer in the uh, olive garden and, and blood came down his forehead Okay, the thing is that the Word of God in the heart, the burning bush experience, okay, uh, that there is God's Word, all right? Not the printed page. Now, I'm not saying the printed page is not important, but it's not God's Word because God's Word is what's the active operating force in the universe that brings about uh, repair and correction to make sure God's outcome for his blessing is prosperous throughout all the eons of ages. It is not the printed word. The printed word is just a printed word. It's just the uh, entrance into the spiritual realm as you meditate it as you meditate on it and put it into your heart, that God, when you put God's the word of the print word of God into your heart, then God breathes on it. 
with the fire of his life, the fire in his his heart. He breathes on that. Okay, the, the Bible, the Word of God, the printed Word is like sticks and twigs, okay, like a little coal, right? Like, like your barbecue. You put the, you put the coals, the black holes inside your heart, and then you put the oil, the Holy Spirit, on top of your coals, and then it takes God Himself, God the Father, to go to breathe on it, right? And when He breathes on it, it gets ignited. And it, it burns fire into all those coals. And each of those coals is the truth of God that he's given you. So God's already sent his breath when he breathed into Adam. It's already done before time began. We were all with God in heaven in eternity before time began, before there was even an earth created. Now I want you to think about that, okay? All right, in Jesus' name, it makes perfect sense to me, but the natural mind might have a problem with it. So if you have a problem with that, it might be because you're natural-minded. So, no problem. Just go to Glorious Mercy or Daniel's Fire 325com page down 30 times, and to the Meet Jesus section, get reborn, and receive the Holy Ghost, and you'll be fine. You'll be able to understand this le these lessons. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, now we're going to pray some. Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you for your word. Thank you for helping us explain it in such a way that people can understand it. Okay, I know I understand it. I know I'll never be the same, Lord, in Jesus' name, because of your name, my word. I know that, Lord, you're always with us. And you're always correcting things, fixing things all around us. Okay? We don't have to know what all the problems are. You know what the problems are in our life. You want our life to be successful and blessing and prosperous. So you identify all the things around us and correct those things so they will work with us and in harmony with us. In Jesus' name, amen. On autopilot, even. And you send us the Holy Spirit to be the seal and assurance of our eternal salvation that we can have the hope of glory. We, we are, you know, we already have the hope of glory inside of us. The Christ is in our heart. And we are, we have the hope of glory in us. And we thank you, Lord. And we thank you, as you said, I heard your voice before, to give thanksgiving for every area of your life. So I thank you for our finances, Lord. And I thank you uh, for the way you're handling everything and the pay raises and Lord I thank you for our health that we're healthy and we have insurance and we have everything going on for us there and we thank you for the house Lord even though it needs a little help here and there we still have a house and we thank you that you're bringing repairs to it Lord God automatically Lord we thank you for everything you've given us Lord we thank you for the future friends in our lives but we thank no not for, we thank you for the friends in our lives Lord we thank you that people around us love us Lord in Jesus name we thank you for everything you've given us the food that we have Lord we thank you for it Lord in Jesus name Amen uh, please Give everybody else the understanding and wisdom to draw for the eternal uh, source. Uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, the abundant blessing that you have in the heavenlies for us, Lord God, that we can draw on those and bring them and materialize them into this world by the now, okay? Now we are connected to eternity, and now the Word is working. The Word is working immediately. The Word is working now to bring... Uh, all those thanksgivings into our life. It's already in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. From the fountain before the time began. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. The angels surround us, like the Philippians, you know, like the angels, like the Romans guarded Philippians, the Philippians, that angels guard us like a fortress. In Jesus' name, amen. So, now, uh, please uh, comment, share, subscribe, download the story materials at uh, secondchancecassette.com or Daniel's Fire 325. Uh, actually, if you go to the healing room of, of my heart, uh, you, go, you can go to froggy.club or any of those. Okay. Uh, if you go to the healing room of my heart, this page, this healing page, is now listed in the healing room of your heart. Amen. Because God, because Jesus, the Word of God, is in the midst of our heart. And that's where the sickness is. In the midst of our heart. And God brings a correction to it. In Jesus' name, amen. And has corrected it. Amen. Amen. So that's it. Thank you.